came to Easton in October 1976 um, as a reporter for the Star Democrat. And I was, I was um, 30 years old, been married, oh my gosh, December 1975, and decided to make a career change and to go back to my passion, which was journalism. And I had majored in journalism and political science in college, and it's what I always loved doing. And the first job I had out of college was with a community newspaper in Howard County. And I loved it. But I got away from it and thought, no, you know, I need to go into business. I need to make money. Well, I mean, I didn't make money, but I went into business and I said, you know, this doesn't feel right. They came down here as a newspaper reporter. Within about three or four months, I was assigned, um, asked to be editor of two community papers in Caroline County. After a year or so there, I was asked to go to Queen Anne's County, be the, the uh, editor of the Queen Anne's Record Observer and the Bay Times, there were two. And I did that. And um, I just loved it. I mean, being a community editor really excited me because you're so close to the people, so close to the action. And I used to say, you know, if someone has a complaint, and there were many, you're going to run into them on the street. You know, you can't hide on the third or fourth floor of the Sun Papers building on Coward Street in Baltimore. You're going to run into folks, and they're going to say, you know, you just didn't get it right. You didn't get it right. And I'd say, thank you. Thank you for telling me that. That taught me to love community journalism and taught me more to love the community. Um, yeah. I think living on the shore, working in Annapolis for the state treasurer, around money, around finance, and around debt, around procurement, um, my politics those still steeped in the Democratic Party became far more moderate. And being in a state where statutorily you must have a balanced budget, it again opens your eyes and gives you understanding about why you need to, to operate in a fiscally sensible manner. Well, my impressions are um, that um, integrity still matters, honesty still matters, Hard work still matters. Um, concern for taxpayer money still matters, particularly in the area of procurement. Not only in this state, but many other states. Corruption is, is a thing that can happen very, very easily. And I'd like to think that one of the things I did in my job as treasurer cops layers on the Board of Public Works and dealing with a gamut of state agencies that I insisted on pure, pure and utter honesty. That if she were going to vote every two weeks on millions and millions and millions of dollars, that she needed and had to have the best available information. And realizing that that was colored by, by agencies wanting what they wanted and putting their best foot forward but on the other hand, the push and pull was I demanded that they, that they provide accurate and honest information, even if it hurt. Um, the complaint that was often heard, that I often heard about the procurement system in, in um, Maryland was it was so bulky, it was so time consuming, it was so inefficient. And I actually came to a point, surprisingly, for someone who is typically impatient, that maybe there is a value in slowness. Maybe there's a value in venting. Maybe there is a value in every two weeks coming before this very public board and making your case and maybe taking some slings and arrows from the governor, the controller, and, and the treasurer. That there's a value in sunlight. Lots of sunlight. My wife and I will have been here 42 years in October. We're still come here. And we, we, we understand that. You have to come from somewhere. Um, but you are correct. And I deliberately, deliberately focus on that.
that local content, those local ties, because I'm a true believer that the Talbot Spy is a community asset and draws a community together. Right, and no community is perfect. And um, I haven't assigned myself the task of looking for blemishes. But I'm also not going to ignore them if I, if I see them. And when you're talking about Bishop Cook, who worked here for the, the Diocese of Easton, and as I've written, um, I thought that the Easton Diocese was too tolerant regarding her behavior. But if I see something, as for example with the crab pickers in Dorchester County and the lack of visas to bring in for foreign workers in order to keep the business going, I think I see a real hit on the economic development and on the fortunes of those business people in Dorchester County. Most national stories, they all have like a local impact. You just have to look for them and sometimes, and so um, this column this past week looked at the farming industry. It's a big, big industry in, in the shore and I learned that from my, my various jobs and uh, as, a, as a community editor. And so I was, I was as you know, I, I looked into the impact on local farmers of the tariffs. And it wasn't healthy, and it isn't healthy, that is, that, that impact. I wish the Talbot County Council, the Eastern Town Council, the nonprofits that we've talked about, the businesses, um, had a greater diversity um, in the top and middle ranks, um, um, diversity to include African Americans and include the Hispanic community. I wish there were um, a, a greater presence. Uh, 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 that, that's the thing that I that I think about. I think about um, a lot. That I wish that were um, the case. I think there are strides being made. I like I like to think those strides could be, could happen faster. I, I'd like to see a greater understanding and grasp of of, of global warming. I mean, th these extremes are really concerning to me. You lived in California. I mean, I keep reading and hearing on the news about this car fire um, that as of a few days ago was 27 percent controlled. I mean, this is a loss of homes, loss of lives, loss of livelihoods. Th these extremes are really concerning. We go two weeks of drought in July, first two weeks, and then the second two weeks we have virtually, what, 10 inches of, of rain? I mean, I think folks ought to pay attention, and I, if, if my, my columns and the columns of others provide a sense of place, of the place that we live, good and bad, if the, and, and, and it projects hope, projects optimism about what we can do to make this wonderful place even better i would be i would be pleased with that